You know, I didn't think I'd be making another video about shiny, happy people, especially not one focusing on Girl Defined, but here we are. Shiny, happy people. I tweeted about my reluctancy to do this, but I've already sat down and, you know, set this whole thing up. So he, we're here, we're just, we're gonna do it. Although Bethany and Kristen were not part of the documentary the same way that Paul and Morgan were, like they weren't invited to fly out and film for them and be directly involved, clips of their YouTube videos were still pulled from the documentary and shown, so they decided to kind of speak up about it. Surprisingly, there were certain things they said, mostly Bethany, if I'm being honest, that I agreed with and sort of, respected, but then, you know, obviously it got ruined immediately after, so. Let's just get into it. Let's watch some of the clips. This is gonna be another long one, hopefully not as long as my last one. The Paul and Morgan video I made was over 50 minutes. Insane. So let's let's try to keep this one less than that. Dear God. Initial reaction after watching the docu-series. <laughs> well, I honestly thought it was, it was really well done from like a um, production standpoint, like the way they created yeah. it, the way they told the story. It was, it felt very compelling. I was intrigued from the beginning to the end watching it. So I feel like the way it was created was well done. Okay. So it's like sort of a nothing answer. That's like saying, yeah, uh, the pictures were edited nicely, but the things that people were doing in them were terrible. But the editing though. Was the story yeah. well told? That's another question. Interesting. <laughs> um, eh, okay. So that sort of gets insulting because most of the story is told by people who were victims and survived a lot of terrible things. So um, I get where they're going with it. Like eventually they, they say, the same. I don't want to repeat myself too much for my Paul and Morgan video. I'll link that below, but they do get into some of the similar talking points about how, you know, the filmmakers had an agenda and I think that's what they're getting at. The wording on saying it wasn't well told can be sort of awful. Uh, if you're somebody who was a part of it that willingly told your story, that sounds like something that would be sort of insulting. Just my opinion. Yeah, I feel like it was sure. definitely very dramatized, though, very yeah. sensationalized, meant to stir up emotions. I mean, it's entertainment, right? So you know, I have an issue with this idea because this is a very serious thing. And sure, they address it at some point saying, this is a serious, you know, a lot of stories came out that were important that we should very much respect. But at the same time to say, oh, all of it's dramatized and sensationalized and made for entertainment, again, very insulting to the victims of people who came out to tell their story. Bad things happen in this world and we need to be able to talk about them without someone just sort of shrugging their shoulders and saying, oh, well, it's all just entertainment anyway. I, after watching it, I was actually kind of a taken back because I had received so many DMs and, and literally like text messages from good friends, like asking if I was okay. And uh, people like checking in on me on Instagram, because as we'll get into, Girl Define had two very, very, very short clips in this docu-series that they pulled from YouTube. What Bethany is getting into here is actually sort of interesting, but I do want to cut her off for a moment. You know, Kristen's normally the one that cuts her off, but this time I'm going to do it. Because I want to show the clips that she's referencing, because this is something they're going to talk about through the entire video they made a huge video on this over an hour long so i'm just gonna go ahead and show the clips that they are referencing so that you know exactly what they're talking about and what i'm talking about in this video again apologies for having recorded this off of my tv screen social media can take something fringe drag queens it's so disgusting it's so shocking and move them into the center of our conversation so god is trying to warn his children uh -oh, satan the lord is god's word of god's truth of god's biblical morality is the Joshua generation. That is the Joshua generation. I explained that in my last video. Um, really gonna not repeat myself as much as possible here. But that's it. Those are the only clips shown is the one of Kristen saying God's word and God's truth and God and Jesus and God. Which that clip is what it is. That's just, you know, preachy. And then there's her going drag queens. It's so disgusting. It's so shocking. So disgusting. Kristen calling drag queens disgusting is like possibly <laughs> on the very, very low end of the spectrum of offensive things that they say, because they have said some crazy shit, like super homophobic things, very transphobic things. So them saying drag queens like, you know, ew, really ain't that bad compared like this documentary could have pulled far far worse clips from Girl Defined. Just watch any of my videos on them. They say some really, really fucked up stuff. And you know what? Just to really piss them off, to turn the knife a little bit, this is Pride Month. Now, I'm not gonna say that they went as far as Paul by making a joke of it saying, Pride Month, baby. And so I'm like, where where do I just wanna embrace 
if you want to call it extremism, mm -hmm. where do I want to embrace it and actually just wear it proudly? Mm -hmm. Pride Month, baby. They didn't make any references or jokes like that in their video, so I'll give them that. I mean, if that's giving, you didn't do something horrible, props. Gold star for you, but it does make me just, I, I want to mention since their whole thing was about drag queens and since they've said so many homophobic things that I've made video after video after video on. Male and female. Marriage to be between a man and a woman. One man, one woman. I feel the need to, in this video, talking about Girl Defined, mention to all of you I'm sure you know, but June is Pride Month. Now we're nearing the end of the month. We've had a lot of things happening this month, a lot of serious things, negative things, honestly, for uh, people of the LGBTQ plus community. So let's just, let's just talk about it for a second. In 2023, as you know, this community in America continues to face a lot of discrimination, especially in the political landscape. Now, Pride Month is supposed to be a time of celebration. Embrace it. And a way in some senses to recognize that the fight for equality continues, which right now it very much still needs to. It honors the 1969 Stonewall Uprising, which is credited with galvanizing the modern gay rights movement, yet we are seeing state legislatures advancing bills that target transgender people, limit protections, and allow discrimination against LGBTQIA plus Americans. Over 400! 400 anti-LGBTQ bills were introduced to state legislatures up until April 3rd. Also, and this is really important, that generally transgender people are more than four times as likely to be victims of crime according to a study from the UCLA School of Law. So just please remember, Pride, it's not just a celebration. It's a call to action that this is the time to use your voice, to use your dollars, to use your votes, and fight for protection from some of the worst attacks we have seen in years. Now, this is not just people saying negative things online. This is not just just the girl defines of the world or some of these conservative talking heads that say terrible things. This is this is a lot deeper. When it gets into politics, we actually start taking rights away from people and that shit terrifies me. So thank you. Thank you, Girl Defined, for reminding me to just get on a little pedestal for a second and talk about something that really matters. Or as you would say, uh, just pushing my agenda. Anyway, sorry, I interrupted Bethany and I went on a longer rant than even Kristen does when she talks over her. So let's go back to Bethany talking about the docuseries. My apologies. I left the docuseries one feeling like I'm totally okay. Like I like this would didn't hurt my feelings or offend me in any way. I think because I went into it like you did, where I knew first and foremost, like they're probably <laughs> just capitalizing on a story that they know will make them a ton of money. Like at the end of the day, that's what entertainment mm -hmm. truly is about. Like these people want to make money. So I cannot stand these talking points. Like, do they not make money? in what they do? Do they not have ads on their videos? Or, or do they not have a Patreon? Do they not sell merch? They plug their crap all of the time to make money. What? Oh, because what? You guys are just, at the end of the day, it's just entertainment. You know, they're just sensationalizing all these topics to make money. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it is. Right, Bethany? These people are trying to make money, um, just more of a discerning eye first and foremost, but then was also like, yeah, actually though, I'll, like they're, they're bringing up some really, really important hard yeah. topics that we need to talk about. And I do agree with some of the um, terrible things that had been done in the past. And I, you know, I, uh, to me, I'm like, yeah, let's talk about this. This is really important. And mm -hmm. I, I'm glad we're bringing this conversation up. So I mean, I think she misspoke a little bit there when she said, I agree with some of the things that were done. I don't think that, I think she means agrees that we should talk about the things that were done. Um, I mean, kudos for saying it deserves a platform but it's sort of hard to take that to heart when you're simultaneously saying that the only reason that there is a platform is for entertainment and money, you know? It just loses the oomph that you could have had. I'm glad they made the documentary because I think that this is a chance for us as Christians to discuss and talk and like, let's get into this. This is important. Good, yes. I mean, I do think that when things happen within a community, if people in that community are not outspoken about it, that's a huge red flag. So I do think more people, particularly Christians, should be speaking about issues that go on within their community, even if they don't identify with that like sect of Christianity or that certain, you know, like IBLP, for example, uh, you should still speak out against it because to not is very odd. And Paul and Morgan had an issue with it. They seem to have an issue with it. Uh, saying that the filmmakers weren't religious or the people behind all this weren't religious, which I don't even know if there's truth behind that, like prove it kind of a thing. But, you know, if that's such an issue, then maybe you should look inward and question why more religious people aren't making stuff like this. Like, good on you for saying it should happen, but 
if it isn't already happening, that's a problem. To me, felt like it was very much from from a like they were trying to drive a certain narrative. Obviously, for sure, one hundred percent. A movie, you are driving your narrative, the narrative that you want to present. And to me, that was very obvious. Yeah, um, they're driving the narrative that people shouldn't be abused. I know that that is crazy. That's an agenda. They're all pushing for a narrative here. Like it's presented as such a negative thing, but. What what other, like, I just struggle. Like, how, how do you present this? I mean, I, I suppose what they want, they want it to be more preachy. Like, sure, uh, all these bad things happen, but Jesus is still great and you should still be a Christian. That's what they wanted. That's, I'm so sorry that they did not get that. That would be ridiculous. As much as that's how they wanted it to go. It's just not about preaching. It's just not. Um, oh, yeah. It, it felt like they were trying to have the obligatory people on who were maybe going to bring another perspective or a different angle. But then at the end of the day, I felt like the documentary very much was focused on driving sure. the narrative that they wanted to drive and the agenda and the angle and even the conclusion felt yeah. very much one-sided. What one-sided? What is the other side? What is the other side? <laughs> like people were very hurt and abused. What other like... Like, do you want there to be a debate? Do you want someone to come in and be like, well, they might be a victim, but I wasn't a victim and therefore now it's balanced. See, not everyone gets abused. Growing up in a homeschool family, um, we were involved in some of those programs. So we did go to some of those conferences. We did attend some of those programs. We were never members. We were never deeply ingrained in the program. We never did any of the curriculum, anything like that. But we did have some involvement. And so watching it, I was like, okay, this is really interesting to see these yeah. testimonies um, this anecdotal experience of people looking on and saying, okay, this is what it was for me. And then painting that organization in that one particular light as if that was everybody's experience. As if that was everybody's experience. Oh my God. <laughs> I was actually kind of right. I was like completely being facetious before. I did not think she was actually going to go there and say, not everyone had that experience. Could you, like, oh, that's so messed up to say. Imagine, okay, like, take all the uh, Bill Gothard, all the IBLP, take all that away. Take religion away in general. Let's just say someone was talking about being abused. And they were giving their story. And someone else was like, oh, my gosh, that same person abused me. And they were giving their story. And all of it was about, like, this horrible person. Would you complain about that documentary and say, oh, well, um, so-and-so over here knew that person and they weren't abused, so why isn't their story being told? Like, who in their right mind would go there? I cannot believe that this, I, yeah, I am speechless. I think it's important for us to bring a different perspective and to say, yeah. well, we were involved in some of the programs. In fact, we, did you meet Bill Gothard? Because I remember meeting him yeah. once. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I Okay. <laughs> So yeah. like even meeting the man, you know, who's like the big bad man for this whole thing. Like, he like he was like the man for this whole thing. Why is she laughing? Why is she like smiling? Why is this smile on her face so big right now? Does she know what went on? Like, why is this so funny or, or such a smiley thing? Like, it's just strange to talk about someone. And like later they try to make the distinction between their beliefs and IBLP. And the only thing they can really come up with is, oh, well, they all you know, answered to one man and one man was given too much power and that's why. So basically Bill Gothard is the problem or, or that sort of centralized focus on one person as like the leader before God kind of a thing. But then as she's talking about him, she's smiling and it gets much worse. He was kind of a god in that arena. Um, and I remember feeling that like, wow, you sure. know, he was the leader of the entire program. Like it was like meeting the president is how it felt. Yeah, but for sure. I don't, I didn't really care about him personally. I was just like, whatever. It wasn't a big deal. Wait, <laughs> wait. That was like the most contradictory 10 seconds I've ever seen them. Like this is, she just got through saying how he was revered and like how she felt about when, when she met him or, or seeing him in a room and how he was like a God or the president. And she's like, yeah, but like, I didn't really care. Like, did you guys catch that? It was like an immediate twist. Did you really not care? Because it sounded like you cared. I think we need a flashback. He was kind of a god. I was just like, whatever, it wasn't a big deal. I remember feeling that like, wow, I didn't really care about him. It was like meeting the president, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense, Kristen. 
But yeah, so I think it's it'll be interesting for us to weigh in on this because we do have yeah. a little bit more of a unique angle and we don't feel to this day like we were traumatized by our experience no. like so many people are sharing. Yeah, like so many people were abused, but like we weren't. And so that needs to be told. Like not everybody. <laughs> I can't even I can't even get through mocking. It's just so terrible. Seriously imagine that in another situation. Like someone comes to you and says, "So and so that we both know abused me." And they're like, well, that wasn't my experience. <laughs> Imagine someone reacting like that ever. I think when you watch it, like, just use discernment and and realize, like, this is a documentary or a docu series made by non-believers who clearly, like Kristen said, kind of had an agenda with it. Again, like, prove it to me. I, I didn't see anywhere anything about atheism or these people not being religious. That information, I just keep hearing that as a talking point. But I see no evidence to back it up, which is, you know what, that's just typical for their videos anyway. So it's fine. It's so easy to want to become the judge, like to look at other people and just like, okay, now I'm the judge. I'm the arbiter of truth. I will decide what's right and wrong. You know, I, I don't really feel like I need to be the arbiter of truth and, and decide what's right and wrong whenever I hear stories about the horrible things that went on behind the scenes with the IBLP and, and the Duggars. I don't really need to feel like I have to make a decision there. It's pretty blatantly obvious, right? It's not super subjective. I feel like it should be an objective truth that the things that happened were bad. I don't think that that's me putting myself on a pedestal like I'm so much better than these people. That's not what goes on through my mind. Like how can I lift myself up? You don't need to be an arbiter of truth to know that. You know, and just to okay, be clear, so because so many people have asked, we we did not know any clips of Girl Define were going to be in it. I had no idea the docu series existed until like days before it came out. That's actually kind of interesting because when I made the video on Paul and Morgan, I sort of thought that a lot of these religious channels got reached out to, and that maybe Paul and Morgan were the only ones that fell for it. Um, but I don't really. I wonder why they would have chose to reach out to Paul and Morgan versus Girl Defined, maybe because there's such a strong message in IBLP about wives submitting to their husbands and Paul and Morgan have done more on that topic, or maybe because there is like a husband-wife dynamic there that that's just something that's more easily demonstrated or that would come across on screen a little bit more clear. But yeah, I'm surprised that more of these channels weren't reached out to, so interesting. I had no idea Girl Define was in it. Kristen didn't either. So if people are like, oh, did you know your clips are going to be in it? Like, no, we we came to watching this shiny, happy people docuseries just like the rest of you. Like we heard of it days before it came out. And then we were like, oh, and then we were like, oh, there's some clips of us in it. Um, I only got head nods in it. I was like this. Kristen got words. I was just like this the whole time. <laughs> so that was yes, my big moment. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It seems like she's a little salty. I mean... To be honest, a lot of Girl Defined videos are dominated by Kristen. I mean, when I first started making Girl Defined videos, by the way, I think I was the first one. Anyway, when I first started making Girl Defined videos, I would make fun a lot of the way that they feed off of each other and there's like a lot of mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. When the other one's talking, the other one is always going mm-hmm, yeah, nodding their head and it's just a lot of mm-hmms and like it drove me nuts to watch their videos because of that. And I think a lot of the yeah mm-hms were actually from Bethany because Kristen won't shut up when she's talking. She goes on these rants and Bethany just has to sit there and like. Because Zach and I did the same thing and now we've been married for seven years. And so we have literally been enjoying kissing and having so much fun intimacy wise over seven years. It has been awesome. But before I was married, I remember really thinking through and processing yeah. this and Zach and I even had some conversations like, are we going to kiss? Are we not going to kiss? Physical intimacy yeah. for marriage. I don't know. Interesting. It seems like she's a little salty about her only getting head nods. She didn't get any, uh, any lines in this acting role. Basically that part of the docu documentary was in some ways saying like, oh, and the, you know, Bill Gothard's his toxic teaching, it continues on. And this is the next generation of people kind of carrying the torch forward. And it's just hilarious to me because half of those people, and maybe even more, like have no clue who Bill Gothard even is. Yes. Like, what? And so that was kind of interesting to me, like the people they chose. And like, you don't have to know who this person is. You should, if you're in that world and you literally have whatever. Whatever. You don't have to know who he is to be able to still say similar things or, or carry on similar teachings. It doesn't matter if they know who Bill Gothard is. I know most of those people that they featured, like their messages are nothing like the teachings of Bill Gothard yes. or anything even close was... to that. So I mean, but they are. They are. And I think the only difference that I heard anybody ever say 
is that you know, you should focus on like Jesus as the center and not this man, Bill Gothard. My argument in that is that there should never be any sort of hierarchy anywhere. And if you're gonna be religious, then be religious, that's fine. If you have your God and you put God above all in your hierarchical structure of, of the way the world should work. But anytime there is like a leader, like a man, like Bill Gothard, or even a priest who I, growing up Catholic, was told was the messenger to God, or even in the home where the man is above the woman. Any type of structure like that, in my opinion, is damaging and sets the stage for abuse to happen because people feel like they are subservient and that people who are above them, in some sense, just kind of have a pass to get away with doing things that they shouldn't necessarily be doing. So. Their only argument in the differences in all all these channels and IBLP or or you know the teachings of Bill Gothard is that there's this you know one man that's the center. But other than that, which I still think it's all very similar to because the women submit kind of a thing. I think it's all very similar, and I fail to really see all of these differences. Like sure, some people went more extreme and said you couldn't wear like pants and stuff, but like. <laughs> outside of like the minute little things that no one really cares about, there's so many similarities that you have to acknowledge. And I feel like they just refuse to acknowledge a lot of this stuff. Saying like these, these channels, all these people listed us, Paul and Morgan, we have nothing to do with it. We have no similar, we're so different. I, I'm sorry, I failed to see the vast differences. I just do. Some of the things that I appreciated and thought were important were like, yes, there was um, in any organization where the gospel doesn't, isn't the, the first like thing forward and where it's not truly about Jesus, it becomes about man-made rules, which I think IBLP really um like was lacking in a gospel center perspective and really became about like a workspace righteousness. And you hear, I mean, I remember hearing so much of that in the teaching, like looking back, I'm like, oh, that really was present of just, you do these things and God will bless you. You don't do these things or you do wrong things and God will curse you. Okay. So I was about to give them sort of a point in explaining another difference, but at the same time, like they point this out as a difference, but they spend all their time on their channel basically shaking their finger in your face saying, okay, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. You know, they're very homophobic, they're very transphobic. So I feel like there's so much judgment against, you know, a lot of things people do in their life, women and, and their modesty, and there's so much that they sit there telling you that you shouldn't do. But if that were really true, why in the hell do you spend so much damn time harping on all the shit people would do that's wrong in your book? Um, and so when you do that, it does leave a, a lot of room for people in power, authority, you know, to mm -hmm. um, kind of like control other people or abuse other people, manipulate. This program did kind of create that structure for that to happen mm -hmm. is awful. And I think that that part of the documentary and them exposing that and giving um, victims a voice to share, I think is crucial. Like I said, the similarities are unmistakable. And a lot of the talking points of these channels, of the hierarchy that they put into place with men above women, etc. I do think that that does exactly the same thing. And I explained this a lot in my Paul and Morgan video. I think this, the idea of the wives submitting is toxic and is abusive and absolutely just like the teachings in IBLP sets the stage for abuse. And I think that that we need to approach that with a ton of compassion and just our heart should break just like God's heart breaks when mm -hmm. his word is misused and when people are harmed and um, wronged. I mean, that is like, that. that is so heartbreaking. So I I really was like, just, uh, I, I hate that that happened. And I know that happens in all sorts of families and organizations. It's not just like conservative movements, but because it's yeah. like the name of Christ that's being used to do that is just awful. So I, I was really mm -hmm. grateful that they were exposing that. Okay. I'll give Bethany a point for saying that. I, I do appreciate that she calls out that this needed to happen. I think a lot of religious people, I've seen a lot of chats and stuff going on about this. They just, they have no love for this documentary. They're just pissed off. They feel like it's an attack piece on Christians and they can't even say something like that. So at least Bethany isn't extreme enough. Like I still think she's extreme, but at least she has a place in her brain where she can process that this is overall a really good thing. So I will give her a point for that. When you place one man as yes. the head honcho of the entire program and everybody is now kind of 
trained in a sense to look to this one man as the man who has the answers, the man who has all the wisdom, the man who is creating all of the programs, all of the curriculum. And he's almost upheld, like not like he yeah. is God, but like he almost has this special in with God. Well, I think I sort of already gave my rant on this, uh, how I think it's sort of similar. The whole wives submit thing, I feel like it's similar to that. Also, a uh, one man above that's like the messenger to God is like priest. So... I already talked about it, but that's just her sort of explaining their thoughts on it even further. Many families had good hearts and that they wanted community. They wanted, you know, a safe place for their children, quote unquote. Um, But then I think the problem escalated as time went on and it did become so centered around one man and everyone rallied around that person. And then it just became, you know, you have to protect the image, you have to protect the man. And then that's when I think abuse started happening behind the scenes and people Mm. wouldn't talk about it because it would ruin the image of the organization. Again, they're still driving the same point home. I really gave my rant on this part too soon in the video. But that's why there's so much abuse that goes on in, in like the Catholic Church because there is that, you know, priest that's the head of the church, and then there's the pope, and there's like a bunch of cardinals, and there's there's a whole thing. I don't remember. It's been a long time since I went to my Catholic school stuff, but there is such a hierarchy, and it is such like a system that is uh, and has been in place for a long time that there is that preservation of their image, and that's why so much of this stuff continues to happen. And I think in any church, in any community, there is the potential for that. So I think it's something we all need to be aware of. But I think to just kind of cast it all aside because IBLP had Bill Gothard and to act like that's so much different than any other church in the world where there's a priest or a preacher or God knows what, like that is an unhealthy message I think that they're sending because they're making people think, well, at ease, you don't have a Bill Gothard, so it probably won't happen to you. I don't think so. I think you should use discernment no matter what. So this next thing actually made me give Bethany a couple more points because they're talking about um, a lot of the backlash the documentary got from some Christians is that the kids should not have spoken out against their parents because there's that whole honor your father and mother bullshit, which I say is bullshit because sometimes you don't have parents that deserve that. And I don't think just automatically granting anyone respect, whether it's women under their husbands or children under their parents, like that's just not something that I think is healthy. But uh, since these kids were speaking out about the stuff that their parents did, a lot of Christians were like, you should honor your parents. You should not say any bad words about them publicly. And Bethany actually disagreed with that, which I appreciate. You know, their family was on reality TV and a lot of them, they started as kids. And so they didn't really have a choice for their lives to be completely public. Uh, And so I know there's disagreement, like, should she be sharing in this way? Should Ginger even be sharing in the way that she's sharing so publicly? And my take on all that is, is that, you know, I think the parents, they chose kind of like the path that they set their family on a very public path. And now that the kids are adults, I think that it's perfectly fair. And I actually think it's good for them to be able to have like their own opportunity to share as adults, as marrieds, as their own families to say, hey, this these are my thoughts. Whether we agree or disagree with every last thing they're saying, I think it's really important. And so I found it, I personally didn't agree with the part, the Duggar family released a statement saying like, oh, this should all happen behind closed doors. Like I personally didn't agree with that because I, I feel like, well, you didn't give them a choice and you put them before everyone their whole lives. And now that they're sharing and it's not making you look positive, now you don't like it. Like they didn't have a choice how they looked in these videos and stuff. So just as like an adult in the similar age range, in that way, I... Um, Like I said, whether you agree with everything Jill says or not, I personally think that's a positive that she has the opportunity to share, just like Ginger has the opportunity to share. And Mm -hmm. to me, I think that's a good thing. I mean, I I don't think she could have said that any better. I'm glad that Kristen didn't interrupt her this time and let her talk because that was actually a really genuine, um, heartfelt response to that criticism that the documentary is receiving. And that's exactly how I feel about it. So I'm surprised. I mean, you know a broken clock is right twice a day kind of a thing. But I actually agreed with a whole, what? She talked there for about a minute, over a minute, (laughs) and I didn't have any objections. What kind of world are we living in? Yeah, I think it's perfectly fair that you are, your whole life is on reality TV. Some of the hardest, darkest moments, especially for some of the girls with the abuse they suffered and then having to give statements publicly and talk about it, which it sounded like from the documentary, like Jill wasn't really wanting to, but felt like obligated to because of the, the show the and just the image. Yeah. And needing to speak up. And so I just feel so bad that they had to go through that and then yeah. had to do it 
publicly and share their heart and share in a very emotional and broken place. (sighs) Almost, Kristen. You almost had me. I feel like, and she does this a few times, referring to people who have gone through things as broken over and over again, especially in reference to people who have gone through sexual abuse and stuff like that. Um, I don't think that's the healthiest way to describe them. I understand she was trying to come across as, as empathetic, but it also sounded a little bit judgy. They have this mentality. She she uses the word broken in a lot of their videos. They, she has this mentality that we're all broken, right? And we need to be redeemed through Jesus Christ. And that whole talking point, again, that whole talking point. It's just not the nicest. It doesn't, it doesn't leave you feeling good if you're someone who's trying to recover from something for someone to keep saying, and you're broken. <laughs> like, thanks. Thank you. My whole conversation that I did have with Ginger, she finally found freedom. And it wasn't freedom yeah. by breaking away. You know, the freedom didn't come just by breaking away from IBLP or just, you know, thinking differently than maybe her parents. It came from her heart seeing the gospel, seeing the beauty of Jesus, seeing seeing his redemptive work, seeing the freedom that comes from his forgiveness. I just love that so much. It's so powerful. And I'm so grateful that she wrote her book, that she's speaking up, that she's sharing, and she's not swinging to another side of just completely taking on maybe like a victim uh, mindset, a victim lifestyle. (laughs) She's not playing the victim card. I mean... Jesus Christ. I know that they're gonna love that I just said Jesus Christ. The Lord's name was taken in vain. I mean, come on. How how could you say something like that? Like you're shaming people who in your opinion have like a victim mentality or attitude about, they are victims. Holy shit, if anybody is a victim of something, these people absolutely fit into the category. They went through hell and back. And you're gonna sit there and say, well, this person, Ginger, did it better because she didn't play the woe is me card. At a victim lifestyle of woe is me. Fuck off, man. Some people are allowed to feel their feelings and be outspoken about it without being shamed. You can't sit there in one breath and say, it's so good that they're telling their stories and coming forward and then say, but you know, some people didn't act like a victim about it. Her sincerity in this is lacking and it is really showing right now. Victim lifestyle of woe is me. I can't believe this. these things happened to me and then kind of just retaliating and getting totally. angry like she's using it for good. You're allowed to get angry. You're allowed to be mad when someone does this shit to you. Don't shame someone who has gone through that for feeling anger. Anger is a healthy and a valid emotion, and it's there for a reason. We're supposed to be mad at stuff sometimes. And if anything is (laughs) deserving of anger, it's this. Stop it. Stop telling people how they need to recover. So that whole segment was supposed to be them applauding the documentary and saying why they liked it. That That's what that was supposed to be. But now we're moving on to the things they disagreed with, because that's not what we were already doing before things that we disagree with in the documentary yeah i'll let you kick it off with your thoughts on that okay yeah i mean okay so our friends paul and morgan they created a whole video on it they had firsthand experience um with the producers and stuff and so um i thought that was interesting we'll link their video you can go watch their experience i will link my video below you can watch my video reacting to their video so that you don't have to watch their video um but let, let's just let's just see what they have to say about it. But their experience with the creators of this docu series was very deceitful and very um mm-hmm. the the d- producers and directors whoever like literally just lied to them to get them on there knowing full well that they wanted to make Paul and Morgan look really terrible and look like they're trying to carry on this you know horrible you know message to the next generations and stuff. They're not trying to make them look like anything. They made themselves look a type of way. The words that came out of their mouth they own those words and nothing else really matters. Actually, there was a Q&A with one of the producers and <laughs> they responded saying, well, you know, actually, yes, we did only use a short clip of Paul and Morgan, but that made them look better than what they would have looked like essentially had we used more. Like we did them a favor. The word they used was favor. Yeah, we did them a favor by not showing more. Watch my video on it, but I do want to give a brief thing here just in case you don't want to watch that video. It is very long. I went into detail. But the producers, although, you know, Paul and Morgan feel like they were deceitful, I, maybe they were in the sense of telling them that this is going to make you look good, if that is something that they said, but the producers literally told them, 
what they were going to talk about, what they weren't going to talk about. They gave them a list of the questions beforehand so they could be prepared. It's not like they were tricked. It's not like their words were manipulated to say something that they didn't mean. Like I, I've done several interviews in my lifetime and I've never been given a full list of all the topics beforehand. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> like I just have to go in prepared for someone like Jesse Lee Peterson, for example, to try to blindside me with a bunch of random stuff because that's the kind of person they are. And you just have to be careful with what you say because it's walking on eggshells. But Paul and Morgan were literally given everything beforehand on a silver platter and still talked about how deceitful the producers were, which I, I sort of struggle with. It shows you where the heart of the producers and creators were. They weren't trying to make Christianity look good in any way. They really were trying to find a story and use an angle to take down conservative Christianity. No, they were not. This was not an attack on conservative Christianity. This was an attack on extreme fundamentalists. I know so many Christian people that have nothing, they have really truly don't have similarities with any of this crap. I feel like Paul and Morgan, Girl Defined, a lot of the influencers that they showed absolutely fall into that category of being very extreme. Paul wears it proudly like a badge. I'm willing to embrace elements of extremism. Again, watch my last video. A lot of people that I do know that are Christians, I've actually talked to about the documentary because they watched it too, or I've seen their posts on Facebook about it. Nobody was offended. They weren't offended. They're like, this is really interesting. I can't believe this was going on. Spread the word. But there wasn't any like, I am so victim. Didn't she just say not to have a victim mentality, bitch? <laughs> I feel like Christians who are not extreme fundamentalists did not have a problem with this documentary. It's, it's the type of person that gets offended that might need to look in the mirror a little bit longer. Because this fringe movement, this specific organization was so bad, all of homeschooling, all of Christianity, all of it is so bad and they're all just crazy and wackos and like we need to just completely, like unless you're deconstructing and completely rejecting all of that, like you're a part of the problem and it's like, whoa. And I'm like, whoa, because I literally didn't see that. And I said this in my last video, did I watch the same documentary? Because I did not get the message that all homeschooling was bad. I know people who homeschool, they're actually not even religious. And some people I know that are religious at homeschool are Jewish and it doesn't matter. Like no one cares about homeschooling. It was the type, the specific type of, of education that was going on in certain places that, you know, push people to intentionally go into politics for their agenda of putting the Bible basically into law. Uh, you know, that was, that was how homeschooling was referenced. Homeschooling in general was not shit on. Christianity in general was not shit on. Conservatism in general was not shit on. It was a very specific thing. And if you're taking it personally, maybe it's because you have too many things in common. They just lumped every single homeschooler, every single conservative Christian into one boat and are basically like, if you are not deconstructing, you are a part of the problem. Like that whole messaging was ridiculous. That was not a part of the messaging. It really wasn't. I highly encourage you guys to go watch the documentary. Most of the people, 95% of the people that they had on there that were interviewed were people who were against conservatives. That's not true. Where is she getting this 95%? I want to know. Who grew up in the IBLP movement, but are now deconstructing, who are in many ways turning away from the faith, um, who are really attacking homeschoolers and homeschool families. I really feel like they're just straight up lying right now. I feel like they, honestly, here we go, full circle. They are sensationalizing something to make it seem like they are more of a victim than they are. All this claim about the documentary being sensationalized and people being, woe is me and being the victim, it's all projection. It's all projection. And anyone who is still, you know, not completely deconstructing, they're basically, like you said, looking to those people and saying, well, now you're part of the problem. You're carrying on yeah. the torch. You're continuing this cult. But where are the other voices? Like, where are the other people in the docuseries saying like, okay, hey, I was in that program or I was a part of that conference and here's my experience. It yeah. didn't ruin my life in the same way. <laughs> Here we go again. We know the same person. One of us got abused, but why isn't my story being told? Because I wasn't abused and not, not everybody that person knows was a victim. Tell my story. I'm fine. It should be about me. Um, You know, I never suffered any sort of abuse. I was never felt manipulated in any way. You're a horrible, that's, you're horrible, Kristen. You are just, that is just such a horrible take. I hope you feel terrible about saying this. You don't, but you should. There was no balance of other yeah. perspectives, which is why we're thankful that we can even share this and say like, yeah. it didn't wreck everyone's life. Oh, God. 
the entitlement, the, I just, got, there's so much grossness about this. Could you imagine if every single person that was ever a victim of something, you needed to have equal time from someone who was just fine <laughs> with whatever the thing was? Like, what kind of world do they live in that they think they deserve that? It's not about you. This is about bad things that happen to people. They deserve to be able to talk about their trauma. They deserve to get the word out that these things can happen to people. This is not just sharing their story for catharsis. This is also a warning to people to be aware that these types of things can happen. I don't think that warning needs to include, but it might not. <laughs> You know, be careful around strangers. Sometimes strangers can do really horrible things, but sometimes they're great. Where are all the kids that didn't get abducted? Where's their story? At the end, their big conclusion felt like it was, yeah. and look at all of these people, this next generation of Christians. Like, look at how they're using their voice. They're trying to be trendy. They're trying to be cool. And they're trying to further the message of Jesus. And it was almost like, oh no, how could Christians want to further the message of Jesus? It's not about... <laughs> It's not about Christians wanting to preach Jesus. It's about y'all being terribly homophobic and transphobic and anti-woman and everything that's horrible that you say. It's about that type of mentality. There is something wrong with that. It's not like you're just out there saying fluffy stuff that's nice with rainbows and shit saying, oh, Jesus, we love Jesus. Jesus is great. No, you're waving your finger in people's faces, telling them why the, their lifestyle is bad or not okay with God or why they're disgusting. Disgusting, right? That's the word she used. It's so disgusting. It's so shocking. This docu-series, the way it ended, so hopeless. Like, so what What do we do? It's basically like deconstruct and then like the universe will catch you and that that's it. It's like, how yeah. hopeless is that? Like, I think there's just, you know, that's why I loved Ginger Volo's book. Oh, again, we have a favorite victim. And yeah, Bethany, I'm sorry that this didn't have a happy ending. This was not like a fun story for kids. This is real shit that happens in the world. Not all of it is pretty. That part to me was just really, really sad how it ended so, so hopeless. I, I just, you know, you just leave feeling really discouraged. Oh, you leave feeling really discouraged. I'm sorry that this <laughs> These people coming forward with their stories didn't leave you with the warm fuzzies. I'm really sorry. To his forgiveness as we find redemption in him, in the person of Jesus Christ, that is where hope is found. And they didn't end there. And that wasn't their message. That was not their goal. You're right. That wasn't their message. This was not with the intent to preach religion. Okay. This was a documentary exposing horrible things that have happened. It didn't have... <laughs> Like, I don't think it had any agenda other than exposing the horrible things that can happen behind closed doors. And they're complaining that there was an agenda, but they're also complaining that there wasn't an agenda enough for what they want. Makes sense. And mm -hmm. if you're like, wow, I I watched it. I do have a lot of hurt and pain. I was a part of that. Um, I, I do feel broken. My family, has, we are now suffering so much because of the way we were raised or what we were taught, the way things turned out. I just want to encourage you to not swing to any extreme looking for answers outside of the gospel of Jesus. I hate this. Okay, so now she's instructing people who have gone through hardships how they should process that, how they should be. Yeah, if someone wants to be angry or if someone wants to deconstruct or someone wants to do whatever the hell they want to do to heal, that should be okay. But you're sitting over here saying, yeah, just make sure you still have Jesus though. I just really have, and I, I mentioned this in my Paul and Morgan video, again, because there was a similar thing there that rubbed me the wrong way. I don't think you should tell victims the way in which they need to process their trauma to satisfy your requirements. And let's encourage one another to speak up and share, um, but yeah. then make sure that we're always going back to the gospel, that that is where mm. we're finding our firm ground. That is the center. That is the truth. Or not. Maybe, maybe it's not. Let's consider that. How about we let people process their trauma in ways that feels good to them instead of requiring that they stay as Jesus-y as you? Maybe that's not the answer for everyone. For some people, Losing religion is what works for them. Deconstructing to some degree along that spectrum is what works for them. Or staying super Christian is what works for them. It doesn't matter and it shouldn't matter. And it shouldn't be a talking point or an agenda that anyone is pushing telling anybody how to live their life. That just to me is really, really a wrong thing to do. But who am I trying to be the arbiter of truth? Anyway, after I made my Paul and Morgan video, people mentioned to me that Girl Defined had this one. so. 
I wanted to give my two cents on it and I'm so glad I got through it because it was sort of tough. It was tough to watch. I skipped through some parts. I don't recommend going back and watching them because it's literally repeats of the same stuff. Girl Defined is still as terrible as ever, even though I might have agreed with certain things here and there or respected at least Bethany's take on some of it. I wonder how Bethany would be if she were separate from Kristen, if she'd be like a little better, more tolerable in some ways. I don't know, maybe not. Let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments section below. I think this is going to conclude my commentary on shiny happy people but I will admit it's probably not my last video on girl defined so buckle up they say a lot of shit you know thanks again to everybody watching this video please subscribe if you have not already it really helps my channel a lot also thumbs up if you would comment that means a lot too because it helps the algorithm because YouTube doesn't really like my videos because I'm controversial and for that reason as well thank you guys for supporting me on patreon patreon.com slash Jacqueline or if you go to my merch store ffvmerch.com and if you want to keep up with me daily life stuff follow me on Instagram and uh yeah actually if you want to meet me I don't even know if you made it to the end of this video but sometimes I post about little meetups here and there and I'm actually right now trying to find homes for a bunch of little kittens that I've been posting about about on my Instagram story and I'll be doing a little adoption event on Saturday. So just follow me for constant updates of what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching this and I'll see you guys later. Bye.